Yo, my voice sound a little bit off. I'm getting over a cold, but I'm here, bro. All right, let's get it. So January was obviously a super busy month. You had the college football playoffs, the NFL playoffs, national championship, Super Bowl, and all the AB stuff that we had to cover along with, of course, staple series on the channel. What happened to us, baby? So unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover the XFL news as often as I would have liked. But today, we getting back to it. Now we're just in time because the league actually kicks off this weekend. You got two games on Saturday and two games on Sunday. So today we're talking 14 XFL players to watch. Now I'm doing something a little bit different today as I'm collaborating with the homie Brandon from That's Good Sports. So basically since I live in Texas and the two Texas teams are in the Western Conference, I'll be covering the Western Conference. Brandon's gonna be covering the Eastern Conference over on his channel. So once y'all done over here, if it's a couple players that I didn't mention, it's probably because they're over in the other conference. Go check out Brandon's channel, watch his video, subscribe over there if you dig the content. All right, man, let's go ahead and get into it without further ado. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Cue the way. All right, kicking off with the Dallas Renegades, let's start out with the assumed starting quarterback, Landry Jones. Now, most of y'all are likely familiar with Landry from the time he spent in Oklahoma. Dude went there in 2008 as a freshman, and after a red shirt year, he ended up being a four-year starter. Now, once you hear that four-year starter, you can start to understand part of his journey to the XFL. He returned for the dreaded senior season. Now, dude was projected as a first or a second round talent before that, but of course there was little to no upside, went back for that last year. And even though his senior season stats were actually really good and probably his best all around of his college career he ended up having a really rough week at the senior bowl and that along with the fact that people thought he had already reached his ceiling really ended up hurting his draft stock so he ended up going in the fourth round to the Steelers now with all of that said dude actually has a lot of ability bro he threw for over 4,000 yards every year of his college career except his freshman season and in that year he threw for 3,000 yards okay 16,000 total pass yards at Oklahoma with 123 touchdowns and only 53 interceptions. That's more yards than other notable Oklahoma quarterback Baker Mayfield, okay? The issue is Landry's touchdown to interception ratio isn't in the same league as Baker. Baker never threw double digit interceptions in college. Landry threw double digit picks every single year he was in college. Still with that said, he's got solid arm strength, good size at 6'4", 225, dude's a sturdy leader. But I always felt he didn't have that edge, you know what I'm saying? He never had that chip on his shoulder like a Brady, a Mahomes, a Deshaun Watson, or younger quarterbacks like Baker or Joe Burrow. He started five NFL games and his stats ain't nothing special, but with the NFL experience that he has and a ton of big time college success, I think Landry Jones is a good quarterback to start building a pro team in a brand new league, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's a good choice, somebody that knows the ropes and ain't gonna get out there on live TV and panic. All right, next up, we got running back Cameron Artis Payne, one of those former Juco athletes. Dude went to Auburn in 2013, and during his sophomore season, he ran for 1,600 yards and 13 touchdowns, okay? He was kind of a one-year wonder, ran a 4-5, and ended up going in the fifth round in the 2015 draft to the Panthers. He played in 32 NFL games from 2015 to 2018, but only started in three of them. So yeah, he didn't have a remarkable career, little bit less than 500 total rush yards and five TDs. Was always seen as a patient runner, but could sometimes be a little bit too patient, not realizing when the play is over and it's time to just duck your head and get two to three yards. So while he might not be an elite athlete, he does have some NFL experience and dude is a solid runner. At 30 years old though, I do wonder if younger backs that might not have as big a name might come in and outperform them. And the only reason I say that is because younger backs a lot of times will have a bit more juice in their legs and that can go a long way. All right, speaking of juice, let's talk about Jeff Burdett solid college career ran a 427 at oklahoma's pro day a couple years back and dudes really got a chance to take off in the xfl i mean speed kills we know this so if they utilize his speed correctly this dude could actually end up being one of those guys that pulls people into the league. He's also kind of making a case to be the he hate me of this new version 
of the XFL, if you will. In case you missed the video I did on him, he hate me's original plan was to change the name on the back of his jersey every single week. The first name just happened to stick so much to the point that he just decided to keep it. What Jeff Burdett has been doing is changing his visor every single week. And he's got all of these dope ass logos and these dope designs, very unique, man. I don't know how well he can see out of these things. If he drop a wide open pass because of this, then he'll go down in infamy for all the wrong reasons. But this is definitely a cool thing to get the marketing going. And this is a player you definitely wanna watch. You don't have old brands like the Steelers and the Cowboys to carry things. So you're gonna need these players to become stars, at least a few of them. One last player on this team I wanna point out and that's Floyd Allen, a player whose full story I've covered in a what happened to video floyd's story is dope he's a juco guy walked on at Ole miss and eventually was awarded a scholarship dude scraped and clawed for every football opportunity that has come to him he's a cat you don't want to sleep on and definitely somebody to watch i'm not here saying that he's got the skill set to become a star in the league while i guess it is possible it's a lot more likely that he'll be a valuable part of a team that super sturdy slot receiver that can move the chain. All right, next we're moving on to the Houston Roughnecks. Here we starting out with Sammy Coates, all right? Very intriguing because dude is only 26 years old. It wasn't that long ago that he was going for 206 yards and two touchdowns in the Iron Bowl. At 6'1", 212, he ran a 4440 and got drafted in the third round by the Steelers back in 2015. But unfortunately, he only had one decent year in the league. Now, that was in 2016 when he went for 435 yards on 21 catches and scored two touchdowns. After that, he bounced around the league a little bit, eventually finding himself out of the NFL. So hopefully, Sammy can get back on track in his new league. He's definitely somebody to watch out for. All right, next up, we got Connor Cook. Former Michigan State quarterback, two-time Big 12 champ, former Rose Bowl champ, like fairly decorated college career, you know? He ended up getting drafted in the fourth round in 2016 by the Raiders, but he only saw action in one game. So basically, he's one of those cats that has the tools, but never could really put it all together. Look, I don't know how this league's gonna look and how it's gonna play. He could potentially be one of those guys that really makes his mark on this league. With that said, he does have to look out for Philip Walker, all right? Some of y'all might not be familiar with Philip Walker, but he's somebody to look out for, okay? He's a 24 year old quarterback out of Temple. And he's one of those guys that has been completely overlooked, okay? He played four years in college, wasn't invited to the senior bowl as a shorter QB, and he hasn't had many opportunities. He's gonna be hungry, and he's definitely got a skill set, and he knows how to play the game. So, Connor Cook is gonna be the starter, for sure, to start things out, but he better play well because Phillip Walker is coming. All right, last player I wanna talk about on Houston is a defensive player, finally, I know, right? Charles James. 29 year old corner got popular back in 2015 on hard knocks dude was undrafted back in 2013 and he's managed to stay in the game all this time let's think about this now he was drafted in 2013 he's always on the back of the roster he's always fighting for a spot he's always on a different team every single year but he always manages to scrape and claw and stay around somehow, okay? He takes every single opportunity. You talking about somebody that played for the Giants, the Texans twice, the Ravens, the Colts, the Bills, Jags, played in the AAF, and now he's in the XFL. So dude is a fighter, he's a scrapper, and he's definitely somebody to watch out for. All right, next up, we got the LA Wildcats. Let's start out with Elijah Hood. Former Tar Heel running back went for 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns back during his sophomore season in 2015. Dude was also a high school phenom, but he's lacking in the speed department and NFL scouts felt he was not dynamic enough. So despite his productivity in college, dude wasn't drafted until the seventh round and was waived shortly after. Never really getting to show what he can do, okay? He got picked up by the Panthers, but then he got hurt. So basically for him, things went real bad, real fast. How fast? He's only 23 years old and he's already out of the league. So while that can definitely be looked at as a negative, it's gonna play to his advantage 
here in the XFL. He's one of the younger players, but he's also got that college experience. And I think now that he's gonna get a real opportunity and he knows this could be his last big chance, you know what I'm saying, to play pro ball in the US, he's gonna be hungry. He's gonna wanna show people what he can do. He's one of those players that's not gonna jump off the screen in shorts and a t-shirt, but once they pad up, dude can make some noise. All right, man, here's the big one. One that I know y'all been waiting for, Sean Oakman. Now, I gotta say this, I have a full 15 minute mini documentary on Sean Oakman called What Happened to Sean Oakman. Of course, I go through his whole story. I break it all down, all the trouble he got into, the details, y'all know how I do it. But to give you the short of it really quick, basically he was falsely accused in college and it literally literally ruined his football career years later after he hadn't been drafted and had been out of football too long to get a shot in the nfl the accuser admitted to lying and sean was found innocent for him the xfl is a chance at redemption a chance to get back something that was stolen from him if he still got the goods out there on the field, maybe he can turn this into something much bigger. But people who remember him for the beast that he was at Baylor and all those memes that was created because of him are definitely pulling for the man. I'm one of those people. Good luck, Sean. Do your thing, bro. Now, we also got a couple former Bengals on this team, including quarterback Josh Johnson. But I want to talk about Kermit Whitfield, 26-year-old wide receiver. In college, this dude was the seventh best kick returner in D1 history averaging 36 and a half yards per return. Now, once he got into the NFL, he struggled to find his place, but at 26, he still got enough tread on the tires to do some serious damage in the XFL. Also, with the altered kick return rules, I can really see this dude becoming a star in his league. Watch out for Kermit Whitfield. Dude could make some serious noise. Now for the last team of the day, we have the Seattle Dragons. All right, I wanna talk about a lesser known player, Fred Ross. 6'2 wide receiver, played at Mississippi State, very productive in his final two seasons there. Ended up going undrafted, got picked up by the Panthers, unfortunately got hurt. Y'all know how it goes, bro. Undrafted player get hurt, of course he got waived. Kind of a slept on wide receiver in my opinion. I think he's got a really good quarterback that I'm about to talk about in a second. He's got really strong hands. He knows how to attack the ball. Had basically two 1,000 yard seasons back to back at Mississippi State. I think Fred Ross might be a receiver to watch. Now the last player I'm gonna talk about today, Brandon Silvers. Most of y'all remember this cat from the AAF. Dude was really, really impressive in the few games that he played in that league. And then as a reward for how well he played, he was one of the first AAF guys to get a shot in the NFL after that league folded. But a lot of people don't know is before the AAF, he played four years at Troy, where he threw for over 10,000 yards, completing 64% of his passes. I'm excited to see him back in a pro league, and I can't wait to see what he can do over the course of hopefully a full season. Dude's a way better athlete than people think. He can extend plays pretty damn well. Dude's got a good arm and I think he can make a run for being one of the top quarterbacks in this league. All right, man, that's gonna do it for my 14 players in the Western Conference of the XFL to watch. Don't forget, go check out my dog, Brandon, over at That's Good Sports. He's breaking down the East. Anyway, other than that, I'm gonna holler at y'all next time, fellas. My name is Flimlow Raps. One. Yeah.